I'm going to be your hematologist today. Hi, Dr. Hema. I miss anemia. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Now, I looked over your chart, and I know a little bit about you, but why don't you tell me some about your background and why you're in the hospital? Sure. Um, I was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia when um, at birth, basically, and I've been hospitalized. I think this is my third time within the past year, and it's pretty much the same deal this time as every other time. I have chest pain, a fever, <coughs> a cough, and um, I'm just not feeling very well at all. Time out. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, what is sickle cell anemia and how many people have it? Well, let me tell you. Roughly 50,000 people in the U.S. are homozygous for sickle hemoglobin and therefore have sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia primarily affects people of African heritage. In fact, 1 in 14 people of African heritage are recessive carriers of the genes for sickle hemoglobin. The disease affects about 1 in 700 newborns of African heritage. Sickle cell anemia is an incredibly costly disease. In 2004, it led to about 113,000 hospitalizations for a total cost of about 488 million. The production of sickle hemoglobin occurs because of a point mutation on chromosome 11, changing an adenine to a thymine, which changes the glutamate to a valine in the beta subunit. This mutation allows the deoxygenated form of sickle hemoglobin to aggregate, which decreases cell deformability and damages the membrane of red blood cells. In adults with sickle cell anemia, almost 100% of the circulating red blood cells contain the mutated sickle hemoglobin. Cells which contain sickle hemoglobin contribute to the pathophysiology of sickle cell anemia in three ways. One, cells are less deformable, which can lead to vascular obstruction and ischemia, which can ultimately lead to painful crises, acute chest syndrome, and stroke. Two, membrane damage shortens the lifespan of the cell and causes chronic hemolysis. Intravascular hemolysis leads to decreased availability of nitric oxide, increased vascular tone, and pulmonary artery hypertension. And three, surfaces of cells are more prone to damage the vascular endothelium, enhancing vaso occlusion and creating lesions which activate the body's immune response. These lesions can contribute to stroke and possibly to pulmonary artery hypertension. Simon. Now, I know this can be really frustrating for you, but there is hope. There is a new treatment using hydroxyurea. Pause. may be wondering, what is hydroxyurea? So hydroxyurea is a urea molecule with a hydroxyl group added on. Hydroxyurea has been used as a treatment for um, myeloperipheral proliferative disorders for several decades. And the way it works, um, is it has two effects in the body that contribute to its ability to uh, help patients with sickle cell anemia get better. First, hydroxyurea inhibits the enzyme ribonucleotide reductase by inhibiting its two iron molecules. I'm sorry, by binding to its two molecules, iron molecules. So let's consider the following. Number one, ribonucleotide reductase is essential to DNA synthesis. Number two, Adults with sickle cell anemia produce very little of the standard hemoglobin, HbA, and they pr but they do produce some fetal hemoglobin, HbF. The majority of, that hem of their hemoglobin that they do produce is the sickling type, or HbS. Number three, HbF tends to arise more rapidly than the HbF from progenitor cells in their bone marrow. So what hydroxyurea does is it inhibits the action of the ribonucleotide reductase. And why is that important? It's because it slows down the DNA synthesis and the production of the HBS hemoglobin because it uh, favors the kinetics of the slower producing hemoglobin, the fetal hemoglobin. So because the he fetal hemoglobin is, is effective at transporting oxygen and it doesn't contribute to the vaso-occlusion events that Miss Anemia is currently suffering from, it's a better hemoglobin to have floating around in the blood. Secondly, the metabolism of the hydroxyurea molecule results in the production of nitric oxide. So this nitric oxide stimulates guanylate cyclase, and guanylate cyclase in turn catalyzes the formation 
of cyclic GMP. And they have shown that in vitro, cyclic GMP has been proven to produce more fetal hemoglobin. So the two things that the hydroxyurea does, just to summarize, is that it creates an environment in the bone marrow that promotes fetal hemoglobin production um, above that of the cyclic type. And two, it produces um, nitric oxide that's helpful for hemo fetal hemoglobin production. So thus, it's an effective therapeutic drug for patients with sickle cell anemia. Play. All right, I'm sure you must have some questions about the treatment. Yeah, can you tell me more about what the treatment's like? I mean, could it really improve my life expectancy or my quality of life? Okay, so let's talk about what it would entail. First, you want to make sure that you don't have hypoplastic anemia, leukopenia, or thrombocytopenia. Therefore, before we get started, I'm going to take your blood and we're going to test your blood counts and hemoglobin levels. We're going to do this periodically. The reason I want to look at your hemoglobin base level is just to see what we're working with and to determine dose. So make sure your kidneys are functioning okay, make sure your liver function is all right, and that will help us determine how much of the treatment we should be giving you and what we should start out with. Okay. So we'll start out with a daily dose. Once a day, we're going to give you the medicine, and that's determined by your weight, and that's how we'll start. After two weeks, you're going to have to come back to the hospital, and we're going to check your hemoglobin levels again and do a blood count. Now, I want to let you know that I'm going to expect a decrease in your white blood cell and platelet count. So this is not to be of too much concern because it's kind of what we expect at first. We're going to keep monitoring your blood count, keep adjusting the dosage until we get a somewhat stable blood count level when we check it periodically. Um, I predict this will take about six months to get to a stable level, and after that you'll be taking the dosage that we recommend, and um, we'll kind of be able to reduce the amount of time so you have to come into the hospital, check your blood counts, once to stabilize the dosage. So that all sounds pretty complicated. I mean, how much does this drug cost? Is it really worth it? Well, usually it costs around $1,500 per year um, with the lab test and the drug. But I want to let you know that in the long run, it can save you over $5,000 in hospital bills and transfusion and ER bills for when you have to come in and be hospitalized. And what happens once I start the treatment? Do I have to take it indefinitely? That's a really good question. You, you don't have to take it indefinitely. That is up to you. Um, discontinuation of the treatment hasn't shown any negative side effects, but studies have showed that there is a benefit for at least nine years. So potentially you could. Now, I want to let you know about some things before you decide if you want to take it or not. You can't be pregnant or best breastfeeding while you're on the treatment because um, hydroxyurea has been shown to increase fetal abnormalities. So if you decided that you want to become pregnant any time, that's when we would discontinue. I'll let you know. Are there any side effects of the treatment? Well, like I said, it's normal to expect those low blood, white blood cell count and platelet levels, but we're going to make sure we are checking all your blood counts and we have it under control. Um, there is some debate about whether the treatment can lead to acute leukemia, but there isn't a lot of strong evidence either way. But that doesn't mean that we want to, you know, take that out of consideration because there could be a small <coughs> chance. I think that's all the questions I have. Great. Right. Really great meeting you. Thanks, Dr. Hamm.